Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash pro revenge, so sit back relax and enjoy some reddit stories. I was recently privy to this email conversation from a friend who is a tabletop RPG developer. From Chris to Tom, subject cancelled orders help. To whom this may concern? I am inquiring personally about a new popular RPG, which was recently released by Big Explosions. We have placed several orders for large quantities of this title due to high demand, and each time we place it, we receive the below attached message that our order unfortunately had to be rejected. I understand this may be a glitch in your system of some sort, but I would be very appreciative if you could resolve this so we could order this title. Yours, Chris, owner of Big Town Home RPG Game Store. Then, from Tom to Chris, CC, Big Explosions Publishing Staff, including OP. Subject, re-cancelled orders, help. Hi Chris, it's been a long time. I don't know if you remember me, but I actually grew up in our hometown and frequented your store through middle school and high school. Your store and the games we played made an incredible impression on me and influenced my career path. It made me want to write and develop role-playing games, which led me to start the Small Indie Gaming Co and move out here to Seattle to collaborate with other developers and develop it. You might recall, back in 2016, that new popular RPG was initially released as an indie title, called New Less Popular RPG. We fronted the costs on publishing and marketing, and sought out game stores in the Northwest United States to playtest our games. I, however, never forgot your kindness, and those years spent in the back room of your store playing Magic the Gathering and D&D. So, I took a 16 hour road trip to show up at your store and personally ask you if you would be interested in selling it on your shelves upon release. At that time, you told me that you only had room for big titles, and that you couldn't accept every indie RPG developer that knocks on your door. I then offered to send you free copies of the title to sell for 100% profit because honestly, I just wanted to have my own RPG on the shelves in the store that was so important to my youth. But you laughed. You laughed. Laughed and told me again that you only had room for big titles. That the RPG industry was really cutthroat and that you didn't have room for every one copy of my book. Last year in 2018, I was privileged to merge with and acquire the much larger Big Explosions Publishing and all of its titles. We are sincerely blessed to be able to share the love of RPGs internationally, and this year we re-released my game as new popular RPG with a half million dollar marketing campaign that has been incredibly successful. In conclusion Chris, you are free to order absolutely any title from the Big Explosions distribution list. There are many to choose from. However, the distributor has been given strict instruction not to distribute new popular RPG to your store. I'm sure there are much bigger titles that you can fill your shelves. Yours most sincerely, Tom, the director of Big Explosions Gaming. Oh, imagine how bad he felt after that. That's like such a kick to the stomach, isn't it? Oh. Mice helped me fire my wicked step manager. Backstory, I was working at a popular coffee shop chain in a high volume swanky location as a barista. We were specially trained to make fancier novelty drinks compared to other locations. I loved my team and my manager, and for the most part, everyone got along. Then, my manager informed us she was moving to another location, and we would be getting a new store manager. This new manager, who we will call Jack, was an old assistant manager from this location. He trained here before becoming the store manager of his own location. Jack would be returning to be our new manager, since he had experience in these fancier stores from his training days. Everyone in the store dreaded his return. From what I gathered, Jack was a jerk when he was an assistant manager. Within the first few weeks, things went downhill. 
he started writing up certain baristas constantly for infractions that others got away with. He slashed everyone's hours from full-time to part-time, claiming that our job description never stated we were entitled to full-time. One barista went from 39.75 hours a week to 16 and a half. Jack claimed our company had no write-up expiration date, so he was writing up baristas based on clock-in lateness within our time management software from when our old manager still ran the store. People went from a clean record to final warning within one meeting with him. Those who had worked with him before organized themselves into a list of who would get fired next. We didn't suspect there was a personal vendetta against certain baristas who knew him when he was an assistant manager. We knew there was. One by one, several people were fired, all in the order they knew they would be fired. Others found jobs elsewhere. It became a race against the clock, either quit or wait to be fired for something trivial. We brought up these issues with our district manager, but he ignored them. Slashing hours and getting corners, including cutting corners on cleaning standards, was providing to be beneficial to the district manager and he was not interested in helping us. I was badly burned by our drip brewer, and he refused to help me fill out the workers comp report, as he was too busy placing the weekly order. I had extremely bad cramps in my thigh, and went to urgent care. I was one of the last walk-ins at the clinic, and left after they closed. When I sent him a picture of the doctor's note, he googled the location from the letterhead and claimed I faked the note since the place was supposed to be closed. Jack belittled me and other baristas on the cafe floor, in front of customers. My mental and physical health suffered. When one of my good friends was fired, I quit with nothing else lined up because I feared I was either going to break down or get fired. This friend, Anthony, got me a job at my current workplace. After Anthony got fired, he struggled to make ends meet with just the one job. I helped him out by preparing large batches of food and dropping them off at his workplace. I met his manager and got an interview the following week. I had been working at this place for probably two months when the most magical thing happened to me. The Incident I finished a closing shift at my current job and was passing by my old store, which was closed for the day, when I saw two mice running around the lobby. I filmed it. Guess cutting corners in cleaning and health standards was causing a bit of a rodent issue. In a rush of pent-up anger, watching my team get fired over nothing, watching Anthony struggle to eat, suffering at the hands of Jack myself, I posted the video to Instagram and tagged the store in it. I posted photos and links to the video on Yelp, Google reviews, the company page, the customer complaint email, everywhere. I figured at most it was going to be a fly in his ointment and annoy him and the district manager. Then, I sent the video of the mice to the Department of Health. A couple of days later, the Department of Health served the coffee shop a notice, saying they were preparing to do a full inspection. I hear this news from my barista friends. A couple weeks go by and my current job has a turn in management itself. We weren't getting our legally mandated half hour breaks and I am put on nine hour shifts with no meals. It was a smaller company with no official HR management training, so they thought they could get away with it. Thankfully, this small company's HR was much more sincere than the coffee shop HR, so I arranged a meeting. I stopped by my old coffee shop before my meeting to say hello to the few friends who still worked there. I noticed Jack and the district manager were there. I grabbed a water and sat down to organize my HR meeting notes. Not even a half hour later, the shift supervisor approaches my area and tells all the cafe customers to leave, as the health department has shut them down. She just turns to me and says, Yes, it was your mice. They found out we have an infestation. Then walks away. Jack and the district manager don't make eye contact with me. I gleefully return to my current workplace and tell Anthony how I was actually there to see justice happen. 
just as that I started with my own hands. He tells my co-workers, even my managers find out I shut down a whole store from one report. HR catches wind of this story before our meeting and I've never been in a more polite apologetic HR meeting. My managers were reprimanded and we had all breaks restored to us. All the departed slash fired baristas took pictures in front of the Department of Health shutdown notice that was taped to the store door. The windows were shuttered up and the place was vandalized several times. They started the cleaning process and the inspector would return to clear it again. About two weeks after the store shut down, I get a call from the coffee shop's HR department. Apparently, whenever they have something like this happen, they look through the records of the store. Between the mass exit of seasoned baristas and the complaints made to the district manager and HR, they had a novel about my old cafe. The HR rep asked me why I left and the first words out of my mouth are, I left because of Jack the manager, and the district manager is complicit in his actions. They call all of the ex-baristas and a couple of current baristas for their stories with Jack, all negative. Jack was fired and banned from working with the company. He packed up and moved across the country. The fancy location was taken from the district manager and now he only oversees basic cafes. I got promoted at my current job to assistant director of the site to oversee HR complaint overhaul to improve the workplace. Based on my knowledge of OSHA and state labor laws, a knowledge partly based on my extensive independent research I did when I was working under Jack, and partly because of my father's experience as a defense lawyer who passed down a deep understanding and appreciation for human slash workers rights laws. Anthony and the other fired baristas were offered their jobs back, which Anthony accepted. He is in a better financial situation now. That's not rat poison in your coffee, it's laxative. A few years ago, I left this job that I'd had for over a decade. I worked alongside a Karen who was having an affair with the boss and thus felt she had to justify herself at the company. Any simple tasks she was given, she failed at and handed off to someone else. So, she had numerous job titles come and go, to the point where she became a glorified cleaner as that was pretty much all she could do. All the staff were extremely busy, but by her and the boss's standards, we were all stupid and lazy. On top of being belittled and taunted daily, we also had extra jobs from Karen ranging from ringing people, fetching stock figures from the warehouse, as in go down and count the stock manually, run errands, etc. I ran the online side, added stock to the website, stock checked 5,000 lines, picked and packed and dispatched all orders, and definitely didn't have time in the day to complete all of my own work, let alone take on anyone else's. I ignored and refused her workload for a while, but it led to wild strops, stamping her feet up the stairs and slamming doors like a petulant child, even running off home in tears because she hadn't enough hours in the day to complete her work. So I decided to have a bit of fun. As I say, we were thought of as being stupid, so I played the role. Any numbers I was asked to ring, I'd say I'd left a voicemail. I'd ring the number and immediately hang up so that I registered in the system, but as the one person who was remotely technically minded at the company, I knew the system didn't register the time spent on the call, so she wouldn't get any responses. Run an errand to do her shopping? Sorry, took twice as long and they didn't have anything on your list. Want stock figures? I'll make them up. Want something organizing? I'll put them in the wrong order. Important documents left out in the office? In the shredder they go. The final straw for Karen came when it was decided for me that one of my daily tasks was to make the coffee for her and the boss in the morning. I used to top Karen's up with laxative. She knew something was up after about a week and was convinced I was poisoning her, but never confronted me about it as she was scared of man management. She became paranoid and started locking her things away in her desk, 
and even left her phone recording with the video camera hidden on a shelf when she was away from her desk, as she was convinced someone was hacking her computer. I only know this because I rang her phone to see where she was, and it buzzed on vibrate. It was a silly idea, really. Why would I want to go and sit at her desk and hack her computer? Besides, months before, I'd already installed a tracker on her machine, which updated my email with a screenshot of her activities every five minutes, and let me know if she was idle for more than two minutes. I even logged into the router and would block her favorite news websites at lunchtime, so she couldn't browse them, forwarding them to the company website. It ended up that I still had to make coffee for the boss, but she would make her own, and suddenly I was excused from her daily tasks. Anyway, when I eventually came to leave the company after about a decade, she became the sweetest person during my four week notice period, and on my last day, made me coffee and made a point of handing the mug to me. The silly sod then turned away so that I could switch the identical mugs, and I drank hers while she sipped away with a big smile on her face. Yeah, but if you've ever seen The Princess Bride, they might be both poisoned, and that Karen right there spent that four week notice period making an antidote to the poison so <laughs> she could drink it without getting the effects. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.